Mesoamerican Chronology, Wikipedia Article Audio Mesoamerican Chronology divides the history of pre-Columbian Mesoamerica into several periods, the Paleo-Indian, the Archaic, the Pre-Classic, or Formative, the Classic, and the Post-Classic. Some of the period divisions are taken from the history of the Maya, the Pre-Classic Classic boundary marks the first Maya collapse, the Classic Post-Classic boundary marks the second, and the end date of 1697 marks the conquest of the last independent Maya city-state, Teasal. However, this chronology applies to other pre-Columbian Mesoamerican civilizations as well. Overview Paleo-Indian Period Archaic Era Pre-Classic Era or Formative Period Classic Era Post-Classic Era Chronology Cultural Horizons of Mesoamerica Timeline Pre-Classic Era The Almec Classic Period Teotihuacan The Maya in the Classic Period Post-Classic Period the Mexica 10, 000, BCE The Paleo-Indian period or era is that which spans from the first signs of human presence in the region, to the establishment of agriculture and other practices and subsistence techniques characteristic of proto-civilizations. In Mesoamerica, the termination of this phase and its transition into the succeeding Archaic period may generally be reckoned at between 10,000 and 8,000 BCE, although this dating is approximate only and different timescales may be used between fields and sub-regions. C. 3500-2000 BCE during the Archaic Era agriculture was developed in the region and permanent villages were established. Late in this era, use of pottery and loom weaving became common, and class divisions began to appear. Many of the basic technologies of Mesoamerica in terms of stone grinding, drilling, pottery etc. were established during this period. 1800 BCE 200 CE During the pre-classic era, or formative period, Large-scale ceremonial architecture, writing, cities, and states developed. Many of the distinctive elements of Mesoamerican civilization can be traced back to this period, including the dominance of corn, the building of pyramids, human sacrifice, jaguar worship, the complex calendar, and many of the gods. The Almec civilization developed and flourished at such sites as La Venta and San Lorenzo Tenochtitlan. The Zapotec civilization arose in the valley of Oaxaca, the Teotihuacan civilization arose in the valley of Mexico, and the Maya civilization began to develop in the Mirador Basin and the AP Almec culture in the Isthmus of Tehuantepec, later expanding into Guatemala and the Yucatan Peninsula. 201,000 CE The Classic Era was dominated by numerous independent city-states in the Maya region and also featured the beginnings of political unity in central Mexico and the Yucatan. Regional differences between cultures grew more manifest. The city-state of Teotihuacan dominated the Valley of Mexico until the early 8th century but we know little of the political structure of the region because the Teotihuacanos left no written records. The city-state of Monte Alban dominated the Valley of Oaxaca until the late Classic, leaving limited records in their mostly undeciphered script. Highly sophisticated arts such as stucco work, architecture, sculptural reliefs, mural painting, pottery, and lapidary developed and spread during the Classic Era. In the Maya region, 
under considerable military influence by Teotihuacan after the arrival of Siyaj Kak in 378 CE, numerous city-states such as Tikal, Uaxactun, Calakmul, Copan, Quiragua, Palenque, Coba, and Caracol reached their zeniths. Each of these polities was generally independent, although they often formed alliances and sometimes became vassal states of each other. The main conflict during this period was between Tikal and Kalakmul, who fought a series of wars over the course of more than half a millennium. Each of these states declined during the Terminal Classic and were eventually abandoned. In the early 20th century, the term Old Empire was sometimes given to this era of Maya civilization in an analogy to ancient Egypt. The term is now considered inaccurate and has long been out of use by serious writers on the subject. 1697, in the post-classic era many of the great nations and cities of the classic era collapsed, although some continued, such as in Oaxaca, Cholula, and the Maya of Yucatan, such as at Chichen Itza and Uxmal. This is sometimes seen as a period of increased chaos and warfare. The post-classic is often viewed as a period of cultural decline. However, it was a time of technological advancement in architecture, engineering, and weaponry. Metallurgy came into use for jewelry and some tools, with new alloys and techniques being developed in a few centuries. The post-classic was a period of rapid movement and population growth especially in central Mexico post-1200 and of experimentation in governance. For instance, in Yucatan, dual rulership apparently replaced the more theocratic governments of classic times, whilst oligarchic councils operated in much of central Mexico. Likewise, it appears that the wealthy Pochteca and military orders became more powerful than was apparently the case in classic times. This afforded some Mesoamericans a degree of social mobility. The Toltec for a time dominated central Mexico in the 9th-10th century, then collapsed. The northern Maya were for a time united under Mayapan, and Oaxaca was briefly united by Mistec rulers in the 11th-12th centuries. The Aztec Empire arose in the early 15th century and appeared to be on a path to asserting dominance over the Valley of Mexico region not seen since Teotihuacan. Spain was the first European power to contact Mesoamerica, however and its conquistadores and a large number of native allies conquered the Aztecs. By the 15th century, the Mayan revival in Yucatan and southern Guatemala and the flourishing of Aztec imperialism evidently enabled a renaissance of fine arts and science. Examples include the Pueblan Mexica style in pottery, codex illumination, and gold work, the flourishing of Nahua poetry, and the botanical institutes established by the Aztec elite. Arguably, the post-classic continued until the conquest of Teasal, the last independent native state of Mesoamerica, in 1697. Mesoamerican civilization was a complex network of different cultures. As seen in the timeline below, these did not necessarily occur at the same time. The processes that gave rise to each of the cultural systems of Mesoamerica were very complex and not determined solely by the internal dynamics of each society. External as well as endogenous factors influenced their development. Among these factors, for example, were the relations between human groups and between humans and the environment, human migrations, and natural disasters. Historians and archaeologists divide Mesoamerican history into three periods, each of which is described below. It is important to note that the dates mentioned are approximations, 
and that the transition from one period to another did not occur at the same time nor under the same circumstances in all societies. In fact, some authors have challenged the Eurocentric vision of this chronology, which is very analogous to that of ancient Greece. The pre-classic period ran from 2500 BCE to 200 CE. Its beginnings are marked by the development of the first ceramic traditions in the West, specifically at sites such as Matancan, Nayarit, and Puerto Mark, in Guerrero. Some authors hold that the early development of pottery in this area is related to the ties between South America and the coastal peoples of Mexico. The advent of ceramics is taken as an indicator of a sedentary society, and it signals the divergence of Mesoamerica from the hunter-gatherer societies in the desert to the north. The pre-classic era is divided into three phases, the early, middle, and late. During the first phase, the manufacture of ceramics was widespread across the entire region, the cultivation of maize and other vegetables became well established and society started to become socially stratified in a process that concluded with the appearance of the first hierarchical societies along the coast of the Gulf of Mexico. In the early pre-classic period, the Capacha culture acted as a driving force in the process of civilizing Mesoamerica, and its pottery spread widely across the region. By 2500 BCE, Small settlements were developing in Guatemala's Pacific lowlands, places such as Tilapa, La Blanca, Ocos, El Mesac, Ujuxt, and others, where the oldest ceramic pottery from Guatemala have been found. From 2000 BCE heavy concentration of pottery in the Pacific coastline has been documented. Recent excavations suggest that the highlands were a geographic and temporal bridge between early pre-classic villages of the Pacific coast and later put in lowlands cities. In Monte Alto near La Democracia, Escuintla, in the Pacific lowlands of Guatemala some giant stone heads and pot bellies have been found, dated at C1800 BCE, of the so-named Monte Alto culture. Around 1500 BCE, the cultures of the West entered a period of decline, accompanied by an assimilation into the other peoples with whom they had maintained connections. As a result, the Tlatelco culture emerged in the Valley of Mexico, and the Olmec culture in the Gulf. Tlatelco was one of the principal Mesoamerican population centers of this period. Its people were adept at harnessing the natural resources of Lake Texcoco and at cultivating maize. Some authors posit that Tlatelco was founded and inhabited by the ancestors of today's Otomi people. The Olmecs, on the other hand, had entered into an expansionist phase that led them to construct their first works of monumental architecture at San Lorenzo and La Venta. The Olmecs exchanged goods within their own core area and with sites as far away as Guerrero and Morelos and present-day Guatemala and Costa Rica. San Jose Mogote, a site that also shows Olmec influences, ceded dominance of the Oxican Plateau to Monte Alban toward the end of the Middle Pre-Classic era. During this same time, the Chupicuero culture flourished in Baggio while along the Gulf the Olmecs entered a period of decline. One of the great cultural milestones that marked the Middle Pre-Classic period is the development of the first writing system, by either the Maya, the Olmec, or the Zapotec. During this period, the Mesoamerican societies were highly stratified. The connections between different centers of power permitted the rise of regional elites that controlled natural resources and peasant labor. This social differentiation was based on the possession of certain technical knowledge, such as astronomy, writing, and commerce. Furthermore, 
the Middle Pre-Classic period saw the beginnings of the process of urbanization that would come to define the societies of the Classic period. In the Maya area, cities such as Nak BC 1000 BCE, El Mirador C 650 BCE, Civil C 350 BCE, and San Bartolo show the same monumental architecture of the Classic period. In fact, El Mirador is the largest Maya city. It has been argued that the Maya experienced a first collapse C100 CE, and researched C250 in the Classic period. Some population centers such as Tlatelco, Monte Alban, and Quiquilco flourished in the final stages of the pre-classic period. Meanwhile, the Almec populations shrank and ceased to be major players in the area. Toward the end of the pre-classic period, political and commercial hegemony shifted to the population centers in the Valley of Mexico. Around Lake Texcoco there existed a number of villages that grew into true cities, Tlatelco and Quiquilco are examples. The former was found on the northern bank of the lake, while the latter was on the slopes of the mountainous region of Ajusco. Tlatelco maintained strong relationships with the cultures of the West, so much so that Quiquilco controlled commerce in the Maya area, Oaxaca, and the Gulf Coast. The rivalry between the two cities ended with the decline of Tlatelco. Meanwhile, at Monte Alban in the valley of Oaxaca, the Zapotec had begun developing culturally independent of the Almec, adopting aspects of that culture but making their own contributions as well. On the southern coast of Guatemala, Comanaljuyu advanced in the direction of what would be the classic Maya culture, even though its links to central Mexico and the Gulf would initially provide their cultural models. Apart from the west, where the tradition of the Tumbas de Tiro had taken root, in all the regions of Mesoamerica the cities grew in wealth with monumental constructions carried out according to urban plans that were surprisingly complex. The circular pyramid of Quiquilco dates from this time, as well as the central plaza of Monte Alban, and the Pyramid of the Moon in Teotihuacan. Around the start of the Common Era, Quiquilco had disappeared, and the hegemony over the Mexican basin had passed to Teotihuacan. The next two centuries marked the period in which the so-called City of the Gods consolidated its power, becoming the premier Mesoamerican city of the first millennium, and the principal political, economic, and cultural center for the next seven centuries. For many years, the Almec culture was thought to be the mother culture of Mesoamerica, because of the great influence that it exercised throughout the region. However, more recent perspectives consider this culture to be more of a process to which all the contemporary peoples contributed, and which eventually crystallized on the coasts of Veracruz and Tabasco. The ethnic identity of the Almecs is still widely debated. Based on linguistic evidence, archaeologists and anthropologists generally believe that they were either speakers of an Otomanguin language, or the ancestors of the present-day Zoc people who live in the north of Chiapas and Oaxaca. According to this second hypothesis, Zoc tribes emigrated toward the south after the fall of the major population centers of the Gulf Plains. Whatever their origin, these bearers of Almec culture arrived at the leeward shore some 8,000 years BCE entering like a wedge among the fringe of Proto-Maya peoples who lived along the coast, a migration that would explain the separation of the Huastecs of the north of Veracruz from the rest of the Maya peoples based in the Yucatan Peninsula and Guatemala. The Almec culture represents a milestone of Mesoamerican history, as various characteristics that define the region first appeared there. Among them are the state organization, the development of the 260-day ritual calendar and the 365-day secular calendar, 
the first writing system, and urban planning. The development of this culture started 1600 to 1500 BCE, though it continued to consolidate itself up to the 12th century BCE. Its principal sites were La Venta, San Lorenzo, and Tres Zapotes in the core region. However, throughout Mesoamerica numerous sites show evidence of Olmec occupation, especially in the Balsas River Basin where Dio Pantiku in Itlan is located. This site is quite enigmatic, since it dates from several centuries earlier than the main populations of the Gulf, a fact which has continued to cause controversy and given rise to the hypothesis that the Almec culture originated in that region. Among the best known expressions of Almec culture are giant stone heads, sculptured monoliths up to three meters in height and several tons in weight. These feats of Olmec stone cutting are especially impressive when one considers that Mesoamericans lacked iron tools and that the heads are at sites dozens of kilometers from the quarries where their basalt was mined. The function of these monuments is unknown. Some authors propose that they were commemorative monuments for notable players of the ball game and others that they were images of the Almec governing elite. The Almec are also known for their small carvings made of jade and other green stones. So many of the Almec figurines and sculptures contain representations of the war jaguar, that, according to José María Covarrubias, they could be forerunners of the worship of the rain god or maybe a predecessor of the future Tezcatlipoca in his manifestation as Tepeyalitli, the heart of the mountain. The exact causes of the Almec decline are unknown. In the Pacific lowlands of the Maya area, Takalikabach c. 800 BCE, Izapa c. 700 BCE, and Chakla c. 600 BCE, along with common Aljulia c. 800 BCE, in the central highlands of Guatemala, advanced in the direction of what would be the classic Maya culture. Apart from the west, where the tradition of the Tumbas de Tiro had taken root, in all the regions of Mesoamerica the cities grew in wealth, with monumental constructions carried out according to urban plans that were surprisingly complex. La Danta in El Mirador, the San Bartolo murals, and the circular pyramid of Quiquilco date from this time, as do the central plaza of Monte Alban and the Pyramid of the Moon in Teotihuacan. Toward the end of the pre-classic period, political and commercial hegemony shifted to the population centers in the Valley of Mexico. Around Lake Texcoco there existed a number of villages that grew into true cities, Tlatelco and Quiquilco are examples. The former was found on the northern bank of the lake, while the latter was on the slopes of the mountainous region of Ajusco. Tlatelco maintained strong relationships with the cultures of the west, so much so that Quiquilco controlled commerce in the Maya area, Oaxaca, and the Gulf Coast. The rivalry between the two cities ended with the decline of Tlatelco. Meanwhile, at Monte Alban in Oaxaca, the Zapotec had begun developing culturally independent of the Almec, adopting aspects of that culture and making their own contributions as well. In Putin, the great classic Maya cities of Tikal, Uaxactun, and Sibal, began their growth at c. 300 BCE. Quiquilco's hegemony over the valley declined in the period 100 BCE to 1 CE. As Quiquilco declined, Teotihuacan began to grow in importance. The next two centuries marked the period in which the so-called City of the Gods consolidated its power, becoming the premier Mesoamerican city of the first millennium and the principal political, economic, and cultural center in central Mexico for the next seven centuries. The classic period of Mesoamerica includes the years from 250 to 900 CE. 
The end point of this period varied from region to region, for example, in the center of Mexico it is related to the fall of the regional centers of the late Classic period, towards the year 900, in the Gulf, with the decline of El Tajan, in the year 800, in the Mayan area, with the abandonment of the highland cities in the 9th century, and in Oaxaca, with the disappearance of Monte Alban around 850. Normally, the classic period in Mesoamerica is characterized as the stage in which the arts, science, urbanism, architecture, and social organization reached their peak. This period was also dominated by the influence of Teotihuacan throughout the region, and the competition between the different Mesoamerican states led to continuous warfare. This period of Mesoamerican history can be divided into three phases. Early, from 250 to 550 CE, middle, from 550 to 700, and late from 700 to 900. The early classic period began with the expansion of Teotihuacan, which led to its control over the principal trade routes of northern Mesoamerica. During this time, the process of urbanization that started in the last centuries of the early pre-classic period was consolidated. The principal centers of this phase were Monte Alban, Comanaljuyu, Sable, Tikal, and Calac Mul, and then Teotihuacan, in which 80% of the 200,000 inhabitants of the Lake Texcoco Basin were concentrated. The cities of this era were characterized by their multi-ethnic composition, which entailed the cohabitation in the same population centers of people with different languages, cultural practices, and places of origin. During this period the alliances between the regional political elites were strengthened, especially for those allied with Teotihuacan. Also, social differentiation became more pronounced, a small dominant group ruled over the majority of the population. This majority was forced to pay tribute and to participate in the building of public structures such as irrigation systems, religious edifices, and means of communication. The growth of the cities could not have happened without advances in agricultural methods and the strengthening of trade networks involving not only the peoples of Mesoamerica, but also the distant cultures of Oasis America. The arts of Mesoamerica reached their high point in this era. Especially notable are the Mayan stele, exquisite monuments commemorating the stories of the royal families, the rich corpus of polychrome ceramics, mural painting, and music. In Teotihuacan, architecture made great advances, the classic style was defined by the construction of pyramidal bases that sloped upward in a stepwise fashion. The Teotihuacan architectural style was reproduced and modified in other cities throughout Mesoamerica, the clearest examples being the Zapotec capital of Monte Alban and Comanaljuyu in Guatemala. Centuries later, long after Teotihuacan was abandoned c. 700 CE, Cities of the post-classic era followed the style of Teotihuacan construction, especially Tula, Tenochtitlan, and Chichen Itza. Many scientific advances were also achieved during this period. The Maya refined their calendar, script, and mathematics to their highest level of development. Writing came to be used throughout the Mayan area although it was still regarded as a noble activity and practiced only by noble scribes, painters, and priests. Using a similar system of writing, other cultures developed their own scripts, the most notable examples being those of the Nguyen culture and the Zapotecs of Oaxaca, although the Mayan system was the only fully developed writing system in pre-Columbian America. Astronomy remained a matter of vital significance because of its importance for agriculture, the economic basis of Mesoamerican society, and to predict events in the future such as lunar and solar eclipses, 
an important feature for the rulers, proving to the commoners their links with the heavenly world. The Middle Classic period ended in northern Mesoamerica with the decline of Teotihuacan. This allowed other regional power centers to flourish and compete for control of trade routes and natural resources. In this way the late Classic era commenced. Political fragmentation during this era meant no city had complete hegemony. Various population movements occurred, caused by the incursion of groups from Aredo America and other northern regions, who pushed the older populations of Mesoamerica south. Among these new groups were the Nahua, who would later found the cities of Tula and Tenochtitlan, the two most important capitals of the post-classic era. In addition, southern peoples established themselves in the center of Mexico, including the Almexicalanxa, who came from the Yucatan Peninsula and founded Cacaxtla and Cochicalco. In the Maya region, Tikal, an ally of Teotihuacan, experienced a decline, the so-called Tikal hiatus, after being defeated by Dos Pilas, and Caracol, ally of Calac Mul, lasted about another 100 years. During this hiatus, the cities of Dos Pilas, Piedras Negras, Caracol, Calac Mul, Palenque, Copan, and Yixchilan were consolidated. These and other city-states of the region found themselves involved in bloody wars with changing alliances, until Tikal defeated, in order, Dos Pilas, Caracol, with the help of Yaka and El Naraño, Waka, Calakmul's last ally, and finally Calakmul itself, an event that took place in 732 with the sacrifice of Yanam Chin's son in Tikal. That led to construction of monumental architecture in Tikal from 740 to 810, the last date documented there was 899. The ruin of the classic Maya civilization in the northern lowlands, begun at La Passion states such as Dos Pilas, Aguateca, Sable, and Cancun, c. 760, followed by the Usumacinta system cities of Yixchilan, Piedras Negras, and Palenque following a path from south to north. Toward the end of the late Classic period, the Maya stopped recording the years using the long count calendar, and many of their cities were burned and abandoned to the jungle. Meanwhile, in the southern highlands, Kaminal Julia continued its growth until 1200. In Oaxaca, Monte Alban reached its apex c. 750 and finally succumbed toward the end of the 9th century for reasons that are still unclear. Its fate was not much different from that of other cities such as La Cuemada in the north and Teotihuacan in the center, it was burned and abandoned. In the last century of the Classic era, hegemony in the valley of Oaxaca passed to Lambatyuco several kilometers to the east. Teotihuacan originated toward the end of the pre-classic period, c. 100 CE. Very little is known about its founders, but it is believed that the Otomi had an important role in the city's development, as they did in the ancient culture of the Valley of Mexico, represented by Tlatelco. Teotihuacan initially competed with Quiquilco for hegemony in the area. In this political and economic battle, Teotihuacan was aided by its control of the obsidian deposits in the Navaja Mountains in Hidalgo. The decline of Quiquilco is still a mystery, but it is known that a large part of the former inhabitants resettled in Teotihuacan some years before the eruption of Zital, which covered the southern town in lava. Once free of competition in the area of the Lake of Mexico, Teotihuacan experienced an expansion phase that made it one of the largest cities of its time, not just in Mesoamerica but in the entire world. During this period of growth, it attracted the vast majority of those then living in the Valley of Mexico. 
Teotihuacan was completely dependent on agricultural activity, primarily the cultivation of maize, beans, and squash, the Mesoamerican agricultural trinity. However, its political and economic hegemony was based on outside goods for which it enjoyed a monopoly, and Aranjadu ceramics, produced in the Poblano Tlaxcalteca Valley, and the mineral deposits of the Hidalgan Mountains. Both were highly valued throughout Mesoamerica and were exchanged for luxury merchandise of the highest caliber, from places as far away as New Mexico and Guatemala. Because of this, Teotihuacan became the hub of the Mesoamerican trade network. Its partners were Monte Alban and Tikal in the southeast, Matacapan on the Gulf Coast, Alta Vista in the north, and Ting Ambata in the west. Teotihuacan refined the Mesoamerican pantheon of deities, whose origins dated from the time of the Almec. Of special importance were the worship of Quetzalcoatl and Tlaloc, agricultural deities. Trade links promoted the spread of these cults to other Mesoamerican societies, who took and transformed them. It was thought that Teotihuacan society had no knowledge of writing, but as Duverger demonstrates, the writing system of Teotihuacan was extremely pictographic, to the point that writing was confused with drawing. The fall of Teotihuacan is associated with the emergence of city-states within the confines of the central area of Mexico. It is thought that these were able to flourish due to the decline of Teotihuacan, though events may have occurred in the opposite order, the cities of Cacaxtla, Cochicalco, Teotenango, and El Tajan may have first increased in power and then were able to economically strangle Teotihuacan, trapped as it was in the center of the valley without access to trade routes. This occurred around 600 CE and even though people continued to live there for another century and a half, the city was eventually destroyed and abandoned by its inhabitants, who took refuge in places such as Culhuacan and Ajke Potzalco, on the shores of Lake Texcoco. The Maya created one of the most developed and best-known Mesoamerican cultures. Although authors such as Michael D. Coe believe that the Mayan culture is completely different from the surrounding cultures, many elements present in Maya culture are shared by the rest of Mesoamerica, however, including the use of two calendars, the base 20 number system, the cultivation of corn, human sacrifice, and certain myths, such as that of the fifth sun and cultic worship including that of the feathered serpent and the rain god, who in the Yucatec Maya language is called Chasi. The beginnings of Mayan culture date from the development of common Aljuyu, in the highlands of Guatemala, during the middle pre-classic period. According to Richard D. Hansen and others researchers, the first true political states in Mesoamerica consisted of Takalikabach, in the Pacific Lowlands, and the cities of El Mirador, Nacbi, Civil, and San Bartolo, among others, in the Mirador Basin and Putin. Archaeologists believe that this development happened centuries later, around the 1st century BCE, but recent research in the Putin Basin and Belize have proven them wrong. The archaeological evidence indicates that the Maya never formed a united empire they were instead organized into small chiefdoms that were constantly at war. Lopez Austin and Lopez Lujan have said that the pre-classic Maya were characterized by their bellicose nature. They probably had a greater mastery of the art of war than Teotihuacan, yet the idea that they were a peaceful society given to religious contemplation, which persists to this day was particularly promoted by early and mid-20th century Mayanists such as Sylvanus G. Morley and J. Eric S. Thompson. Confirmation that the Maya practiced human sacrifice and ritual cannibalism came much later. Writing and the Maya calendar were quite early developments in the great Maya cities, 
c. 1000 BCE, and some of the oldest commemorative monuments are from sites in the Maya region. Archaeologists once thought that the Maya sites functioned only as ceremonial centers and that the common people lived in the surrounding villages. However, more recent excavations indicate the Maya sites enjoyed urban services as extensive as those of Tikal, believed to be as large as 400,000 inhabitants at its peak, circa 750, Copan, and others. Drainage, aqueducts, and pavement, or Sakbi, meaning White Road, united major centers since the pre-classic. The construction of these sites was carried out on the basis of a highly stratified society, dominated by the noble class, who at the same time were the political, military, and religious elite. The elite controlled agriculture practiced by means of mixed systems of ground clearing, and intensive platforms around the cities. As in the rest of Mesoamerica, they imposed on the lowest classes taxes in kind or in labor that permitted them to concentrate sufficient resources for the construction of public monuments, which legitimized the power of the elites and the social hierarchy. During the early classic period, C. 370, the Mayan political elite sustained strong ties to Teotihuacan, and it is possible that Tikal may have been an important ally of Teotihuacan that controlled commerce with the Gulf Coast and highlands. Finally, it seems the great drought that ravaged Central America in the 9th century, internal wars, ecological disasters, and famine destroyed the Mayan political system which led to popular uprisings and the defeat of the dominant political groups. Many cities were abandoned, remaining unknown until the 19th century, when descendants of the Maya led a group of European and American archaeologists to these cities, which had been swallowed over the centuries by the jungle. The post-classic period is the time between the year 900 and the conquest of Mesoamerica by the Spaniards which occurred between 1521 and 1697. It was a period in which military activity became of great importance. The political elites associated with the priestly class were relieved of power by groups of warriors. In turn, at least a half century before the arrival of the Spaniards, the warrior class was yielding its positions of privilege to a very powerful group that were unconnected to the nobility, the Pochtecas, merchants who obtained great political power by virtue of their economic power. The post-classic period is divided into two phases. The first is the early post-classic, which includes the 10th to the 13th century, and is characterized by the Toltec hegemony of Tula. The 12th century marks the beginning of the late post-classic period, which begins with the arrival of the Shishimek, linguistically related to the Toltecs and the Mexica, who established themselves in the Valley of Mexico in 1325, following a two-century pilgrimage from Aztlan, the exact location of which is unknown. Many of the social changes of this final period of Mesoamerican civilization are related to the migratory movements of the northern peoples. These peoples came from Oasis America, Arido America, and the northern region of Mesoamerica, driven by climate changes that threatened their survival. The migrations from the north caused, in turn, the displacement of peoples who had been rooted in Mesoamerica for centuries, some of them left for Central America. There were many cultural changes during that time. One of them was the expansion of metallurgy, imported from South America, and whose oldest remnants in Mesoamerica come from the West, as is the case also with ceramics. The Mesoamericans did not achieve great facility with metals, in fact, their use was rather limited. 
The most advanced techniques of Mesoamerican metallurgy were developed by the mixed ecos, who produced fine, exquisitely handcrafted articles. Remarkable advances were made in architecture as well. The use of nails in architecture was introduced to support the sidings of the temples, mortar was improved, the use of columns and stone roofs was widespread something that only the Maya had used during the classic period. In agriculture, the system of irrigation became more complex, in the Valley of Mexico especially, chinampas were used extensively by the Mexica who built a city of 200,000 around them. The political system also underwent important changes. During the early post-classic period, the warlike political elites legitimized their position by means of their adherence to a complex set of religious beliefs that Lopez Austin called Zwiyunidad. According to this system, the ruling classes proclaimed themselves the descendants of Quetzalcoatl, the plumed serpent, one of the creative forces, and a cultural hero in Mesoamerican mythology. They likewise declared themselves the heirs of a no less mythical city, called Talan in Nahuatl, and Ziwiyua in Maya. Many of the important capitals of the time identified themselves with this name. The Talon of Myth was for a long time identified with Tula, in Hidalgo State, but Enrique Florescano and Lopez Austin have claimed that this has no basis. Florescano states that the mythical Talon was Teotihuacan, Lopez Austin argues that Talon was simply a product of the Mesoamerican religious imagination. Another feature of the Ziwiyuano system was the formation of alliances with other city-states that were controlled by groups having the same ideology, such was the case with the League of Mayapan in Yucatan, and the Mistec Confederation of Lord Eight Deer, based in the mountains of Oaxaca. These early post-classic societies can be characterized by their military nature and multi-ethnic populations. However, the fall of Tula checked the power of the Ziwiyuano system, which finally broke down with the dissolution of the League of Mayapan, the Mistec state, and the abandonment of Tula. Mesoamerica received new immigrants from the north, and although these groups were related to the ancient Toltecs, they had a completely different ideology than the existing residents. The final arrivals were the Mexica who established themselves on a small island on Lake Texcoco under the dominion of the Texpanics of Ajk Potzalco. This group would, in the following decades, conquer a large part of Mesoamerica, creating a united and centralized state whose only rivals were the Tarascan state of Michoacan. Neither one of them could defeat the other and it seems that a type of non-aggression pact was established between the two peoples. When the Spaniards arrived many of the peoples controlled by the Mexican no longer wished to continue under their rule. Therefore, they took advantage of the opportunity presented by the Europeans, agreeing to support them, thinking that in return they would gain their freedom and not knowing that this would lead to the subjugation of all of the Mesoamerican world. Of all pre-Columbian Mesoamerican cultures, perhaps the best known is that of the Mexica, sometimes called the Aztec. Among other things, its fame is because the Mexica state was the richest and most powerful in the region, which came at the cost of exploiting the surrounding peoples. At the time of the Mexican conquest, many missionaries were preoccupied with preserving the cultural history of the Nahua people, and for that reason our body of knowledge about them is much greater in breadth and quality. The Mexica people came from the north or the west of Mesoamerica. The Nayaritas believed that the mythic Aztlan was located on the island of Mexcaltitan. Some hypothesize that this mythical island could have been located somewhere in the state of the Zacatecas, and it has even been proposed that it was as far north as New Mexico. 
Whatever the case, they were probably not far removed from the classic Mesoamerican tradition. In fact, they shared many characteristics with the people of Central Mesoamerica. The Mexicas spoke Nahuatl, the same language spoken by the Toltecs and the Shishimex who came before them. The date of the departure from Aztlan is debated, with suggested dates of 1064, 1111 and 1168. After much wandering, the Mexicas arrived at the basin of the Valley of Mexico in the 14th century. They established themselves at various points along the bank of the river, before settling on the islet of Mexico, protected by Tizazamuk, king of the Texpanicas. The city of Tenochtitlan was founded in 1325 as an alley of Ajk Potzalco, but less than a century later, in 1430, the Mexicas joined with Texcoco and Tlacopan to wage war against Ajk Potzalco and emerged victorious. This gave birth to the Triple Alliance that replaced the ancient confederation ruled by the Tecpanicas. In the earliest days of the Triple Alliance, the Mexica initiated an expansionist phase that led them to control a good part of Mesoamerica. During this time only a few regions retained their independence, Tlaxcala, Mestitlan, Teotitlan del Camino, Tututpec, Tehuantepec, and the Northwest. The provinces controlled by the Triple Alliance were forced to pay a tribute to Tenochtitlan, these payments are recorded in another codex known as the Matricula de los Tributos. This document specifies the quantity and type of every item that each province had to pay to the Mexicas. The Mexica state was conquered by the Spanish forces of Hernán Cortés and their Tlaxcalan and Totonacan allies in 1521. The defeat of Mesoamerica was complete when, in 1697, Teasal was burned and razed by the Spanish. <laughs>